All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are. Game number one of Ten our winner three. finals. That is right. We got our winner finals here. Team Singularity versus Five Team Moriarty remaining. for our Group A action. Again, ultimately the winner of this advancing out of the playoffs. Losers still in it. They just need to then go through the losers portion of what is the group status here. Now, also, I, I think it's really worth mentioning as well, to be fair, the format, how it's set up, every team Radio does advance team on pick. to the quote-unquote playoff stage. It's just a matter of where in the brackets, how far along you get to be. So the winner of this goes automatically to the semifinals of the single elimination playoff bracket. So definitely still want to win, of course, Dyer you know, get that much further. But just to be clear, all teams do advance on to the playoff stage. Uh, Breaking CBK joined by Henry. Henry, here we go, our final series. We got game one. We got a tiny first pick from Singularity. Yeah, super strong offlaner here. Um, wouldn't be surprised Ten to see a Razor rebuttal remaining. from Mortiari. I don't really know the team too well. Um, but Dyer from what I saw team. last game, it seems like Razor's probably in their wheelhouse. And the staple sand king that they've been running a lot. Um, coming out, sand king's been super popular Radiance in these whole qualifiers. Disruptor. Actually running with the disruptor, wow. So no Razor, despite the tiny. Yeah. Um, Dire team ban. Interesting. And there's the Rubik from Singularity that we saw in the last series over and over again um, from both teams. I think um, the, the first series of the day. Yeah. I think um, they played Rubik really, really well. So it's also fantastic against both these heroes. The Null Field against all the magic damage with the Epicenter and, of course, the Burrow Strike remaining. Steel. It's probably like top five spells you can steal, even though it's not an ultimate or five anything super crazy. Burrow Strike is just Radiant team a sick bad. spell for yeah. Rubik to steal in general. Great mobility and also just a great stun. And it brings to the table there if he can manage to get his hands on it. <clears throat> so, but yeah, yeah, the Disruptor pickup for um, Moriarty, it's one of those where maybe you can argue, I guess, the Glimpse is potentially good against Tiny as well. He jumps in, he glimpses him back and back. stop further damage from him. But good Wombo potential with Sand King. Some ideas there. That's why, that's why maybe he is good. But the bans to follow, Nagas are in ban from Singularity. So, interesting there. Um, it just pairs so well with Disruptor. It does. That you could just throw the Sand King on the off lane and grab a Naga as your third pick. Mm -hmm. And that would be very stressful to deal with. Five so seconds the remaining. Opposite last game with the Disruptor and the Enigma ban <coughs> because they had Naga and the same they have Disruptor, so they're going to ban Naga. Yeah. It's very, very powerful to have that combo. Radiant team and there's ban. the ET ban, staple hero of the day for sure. Pairs very well with Rubik. Dyer they synergize extremely picked. well with the Null Field and then dropping the Magic Armor and all that, mm -hmm. as well as just setting up for one another. And the Puck ban, so no Entaki Puck, which was fantastic in game number two against OG. Going to get banned out, and they've also banned out the Life Stealer as well. But Ember but Spirit's still Ten there. Seconds remaining. It's true, and I went and looked at the guy. Apparently, he's a big, prolific Ember Spirit player. Five seconds so. remaining. Ember Spirit, Puck, heroes that are definitely in that guy's wheelhouse. Okay. I'm surprised Razor made it through. Like, I genuinely do believe the Razor into Tiny is very, very strong. Um, a little baffled, I, I would even say. Just, I guess the Naga with the Disruptors stronger. And the Puck, of course, very threatening. And it still could definitely be a pick, of course. Well, Moriarty is putting thought in. That's probably one of the heroes you, you got to figure is at least on the list. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. What they want to pick up here, but dipping down quite a bit. So, again, this is game one of our best of three Group A action. Group B also progressing on the other side. Teams involved in that one. So, Kingwin did defeat Swiss Quality Gaming earlier on. And going in versus Mad Lads, not exactly sure. It was uh, all that one. I believe, you know what, it looks like going in did win that series, so. Radiant team. Mad picked. lads, the new Cinderin squad. Who's in that Those are Brewmaster too, again. Okay. Got the third pick, Brewmaster. Yeah, we saw that for Moriarty again. That, that game number three, especially against uh, against OG there. Dire team managed picked. to get some very good farm. Off so hoping for that here. DP super strong. Gives them good tower push. <laughs> Generally. Good Yule's hero, which is naturally pretty good against Disruptor with Static Storm. Good BKB hero. Um, Ten good Silence initiation remaining. against Brewmaster. Could obviously see him getting a blink this game, which a lot of DPs sort of uh, geared towards these days, mm -hmm. um, particularly against Brew. 
and gives them a, a pretty complete team so far for three picks. They have great initiation, um, decent control, and now they have building pressure and a good mixed damage, magical and physical. They do. Moriarty needing to figure out who they want to match up against the Death Prophet now in that mid lane, what you'd expect almost. And also their safe lane hero. Who that we haven't seen in the mid lane yet is, is that Dragon Knight today. Tends yeah. to be a fairly popular one, but not so far. I don't know. He's kind of a finicky hero. We've seen him fall off and fall on and go off lane and go mid, sometimes even safe lane. Radiant I could see Shadow King and Razor coming out here, but they're going to go with the Quaff. It's pretty mm -hmm. decent against DP. You can just blink out and cancel the Siphon. Mm -hmm. Dagger's pretty strong against her. Generally. Yeah. Good Yule spell there as well if you want to Yule for the silence. Ten seconds remaining. As well. So now back to Singularity. And they're, uh, Five seconds well, they, they probably still need their position for you figure. Tiny's in the off lane, perhaps, or even the safe lane, but either way. Unless yeah, I don't, I don't tiny. see a four. Draw I think they're going to last pick their four. Um, okay. Elder Titan's still in the... No, Elder Titan's actually banned. banned. Interesting. I'm trying to think what they could actually run with. I mean, they could go last pick Tusk. I don't think Tusk's particularly good against um, Quop. And I don't see much that the Snowball save is very good Radiant against. Radiant team banned. There's the ban anyways. It's, it's definitely the most obvious one for me. I think Jug was a really good pick here. We talked earlier about the Jug versus the Brewmaster. How naturally you're looking for a safe laner that can CS... Regardless of Drunken Haze, specifically something that can use spells to CS and you know spin on Juggernaut. Generally, remaining. saw multiple jugglings against Brewmaster. Five I think a lot of Brewmasters remaining. make the mistake of not just keeping out every time you get li uh, lifted and stunned, for example, if it's Rubik Jug. Yeah. Or lifted and spun, rather. Um, I definitely like it. Healing Ward plus the DP push is very, very strong. So we have the Tusk ban, so you're talking about that potential. So a lot of these fours being banned, we're kind of starting to get down the list a little bit. And what, I guess, like a Night Stalker is still there and Nyx Assassin maybe? Yeah, I'm definitely thinking. Maybe. I mean, I don't particularly like either of those two, but they're definitely possible. <clears throat> you, know, it's, you really can de uh, go deep in something like a Spear Breaker. <laughs> it's been a while. Always fun to see, though. Honestly, I'm sure I'm way off, but something like um, a Skywrath for the silence against Quap and Brew would be so scary. I'm sure that that's pretty unlikely. But well, I, I mean, mean Clockwork's decent as well against Brewmaster. Not particularly great against Queen of Pain and Sand King, just because they yeah. get out. But it's very good against Brewmaster. Not the biggest Clockwork fan here, but I could see them picking it just because it's good against team Brew. Pick. Dire team pick. Other than that, I mean. Stalker. Nothing particularly stands out. There's the slaughter too. They're going knights, okay. Yeah. So as you're saying, it's they're they're kind of having to, to dip a little bit here and with night stalker, but whole like in response, pretty comfortable there. Yeah, pretty common rebuttal to the night stalker because yeah. Ligan's improved at night as well. Um, yeah, I feel like the night stalker is probably going to lend itself to giving them a decent amount of map control at night and heroes like Tiny and Death Prophet and Jug that can. Sort of move around the map and actually create kills for themselves. Might be able to take advantage of that or kills with other supports. I definitely don't think it's bad. I think they probably wanted the tusk, and that's why they use so much reserve time. But in the end, I still I I, I still have to favor Morty Artie's draft. I just feel like I really really like the brew here and the disruptor here. I think both those, especially disruptor and the jug, I feel I'm pretty pretty confident in. Getting the yeah. Static Storm off before the spin and blowing him off. And I really like the Lycan rebuttal. The Night Stalker, I think Lycan looks like he's setting up for a pretty good game. I think he's pretty strong against Jog especially as well. Yeah, they, they don't have a lot of ways to slow down the Lycan. I mean, they have a lift is, is okay from Rubik, and then, of course, Avalanche Stump from Tiny, but that's basically it, right? So he's uh, he's going to have some, some pretty good reign here as far as just running at people with that shapeshift. I've seen a similar approach over and over again that... Lots of grouping up from Singularity, lots of Death Prophet, um, and very little control. And then kind of items that circumvent that control by just five manning, making them go on you or lose your buildings, and then getting a lot of auras and stuff. Yeah. It's definitely been the theme I've seen from them a lot. And I think we're going to continue the theme Prepare a little bit here. For battle. All right. Well, into game number one now. 
Yeah, best of three of the winner that's moving on right to the semifinals of the major qualifier that is <coughs> of the playoffs for the European region. So bottom lane, you got Solon and Adamson already heading down there. It looks like the Whalings are shaping up so far. Probably pretty expected. Tommy gets his ward down top. What do you think of the bounty rune change, by the way? It's been a little bit now. Where it's I, like that they don't, I like that they don't give experience. I want the life of a four player to be as hard as possible. <laughs> okay. I would like four players to be so punished. I'd like them to start with like 300 gold seconds and see what they battle. can do. Just because, I mean, if you go look, I mean, look at all the awards. I don't want to say awards, but like accolades and public endearment players like who are amazing, amazing players, but like Roger and GH get contrasted against their peers in other roles. I think it's because you have so much impact with so little gold. And yeah, I just would like to see the role nerf. I think it's a really, really strong role, in my opinion. Anyways. The battle begins. It is so, a star I think power the lack role. of experience. Yeah, I think the lack of experience, I think, hurts the four role, which is something I am happy about. Okay. And it's not like I want anything that would hurt the four role, but. <laughs> don't, Close don't to it. That, yeah. <laughs> All right, so bounty runes are picked up. It is the two-two split, and again into the laning phase. Pretty predictable. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Pretty Queen standard lanes. No profit. crazy lane that someone has to dodge, and I think Brew can actually lane down here without having to do the off-lane pull. Just because, like I said, all he has to do is play around the fact that it, if they commit spin and lift, he can just TP. There's very little chance of dying. Unless Night Stalker's there, and Night Stalker's generally gonna touch yep, DP and play around the co-op. Well, bottom lane, there's that spin. No lift just yet. Just trying to get Sableye off guard, but also put some good damage in, force the regen, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, you mentioned Night Stalker. He's in the middle lane, meanwhile, he's even taking a tower hit right there on accident, but. Trying to zone out Queen of Pain. They're gonna push this pretty aggressively. Yeah, the lane got really, really pushed. There's that blink. Immediately takes out the siphon, as you mentioned. No gold for you. So good in that match for that purpose. Top lane, though. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a, a fairly tough time for Tiny. Up here, unless he gets a, the creep wave pushed up like this, the double range creep. Open out a little bit, at least. First but, oh, that was bottom lane. They kill, uh, kind, they kill the Brewmaster. Correct. So he tried the TP, and now he has to walk back. I think he, I'm not sure exactly what I saw, but I think he mismanaged his salve and essentially salved and wasted it, and attack. then was killed. I didn't do the, and he tried to TP but died, and now he's still walk. Yeah. It's pretty unfortunate. <clears throat> but he had the right idea, just poor execution. It's not easy. Well, he was walking all the way back and actually running right into Juggernaut, who's pulling the creep wave around. So Juggernaut doing some fancy stuff. Working off of that hero kill now. CS not doing too shabby either. Death Prophet 8 and 4 versus a Queen of Pain who's 8 and 1 in the middle lane. You see Queen of Pain applying a lot of pressure to Death Prophet there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's interesting. All that all that um aggression from Night Stalker and Queen of Pain still doing fairly well. Night Stalker wrapping around again. Thinking is looking for either the courier or to cut behind and stun DP, but he's gonna leave and Yeah. Maybe if he's a little bit more patient again, the courier's there. It's going to be so. a salve on the courier, so unfortunate. They had to execute on that earlier. Illusionist is hanging around, but as you pointed out with the salve, he'll be back to full life, so not much more he can do. In fact, he's kind of running in right here. Well, for now, just gets a double stun. Going to apply some good damage. Maybe? Well, that's... Yeah, that was risky. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Got dead. it. Well, that's a kill on a sink. Deny. Nice. Well played right there. Meanwhile, bottom lane again. Bottom. Brewmaster goes down. So, across the board. Very good sequence of events for Singularity there, especially with the Deny on top of that. Yeah, I mean, the one thing you have to factor in is this Night Stalker who's going to be, or not Night Stalker, like him, who's going to be quite creepy and scary with the uh, Dominator at, I don't know what, six, seven minutes. Yeah. And then taking this tier one with the Catapults, maybe easily by 10, 11 minutes. So, like him, though, 
Yeah, again, he's doing very well, 25 and seven. Mention the hell with the Dominator coming. Having a good time up there. So, Tiny. Any reason to believe that uh, Tiny should he be going that Blink Dagger ASAP? I think, yeah, I think Blink's amazing this game. Just because you typically you'll go Shadow Blade to catch oh, people who are split pushing like an Ember Spirit or one of those heroes that you have to catch from Vog. But Blink, you can just get the instant job and kill Queen of Pain or no, get a great initiation on Queen of Pain or same thing. Super important to get the instant job on the last I see the Blink. Spin bottom. Yeah, watching that bottom lane. This time I do catch the kill on a Brewmaster. Yeah, third time's a charm, I guess, but again, just simply the lift. And so now with Night Stalker here, it being nighttime equals more damage from him, so much bigger threat and easy kill. Brewmaster, that's three deaths, of course, on him now. As Oh, that counter ward middle lane, by the way. Well, kind of curious about his, his build up. He's building up uh, Soul Ring, has the Ring of Regen, nothing else. I really think if he had a stick there, it would have been like eight stick charges. It might have saved his life. And it, it seems so. Um, Normal to buy a stick in a lane versus like Jug Rubik and a rotating Night Stalker. Yeah. But the kills at the four minute mark for Night Stalker are coming out. Already got his first one bottom. Didn't skill the silence. So killing Quap is going to be pretty rough. DP didn't skill silence either. So. Yeah, I don't think they're killing him. <laughs> Unless he completely misplays here. He's going to go aggressive onto Night Stalker actually. Goes up the Shadow Strike. Good damage to him, but yeah, without that a silence is mentioned, it's, it seems like a very, very difficult task to get that kill. So Night Stalker will roam elsewhere. I can't, I, I, uh, yeah. I should keep my camera bottom lane, I swear. I, <laughs> I just don't expect it, and all of a sudden he's dead again. By now you figure it out. cool down. He's having a really hard game on Brew. I think it's just what happens when you start the, the I don't want to say feed train, but once you start hemorrhaging kills, you have to TP, you try and TP, then you walk, and then your TP's on cooldown, and then you have no boots, and it just, it starts stacking up and stacking up and stacking up to the point where it just gets overwhelming, and since it's so overwhelming, they're just gonna put Sank in here, yeah. and nice. remove the brew, and it's gonna go top of life in jungle. I think it's a good call. The situation didn't get completely out of control yet, so. Dire structures are Bottom down. lane. Yeah. Illusion. Night Stalker zoning out, sanking quite a bit. Yeah, this bottom tower, it's probably Dyer's dead. As you mentioned, Brewmaster says, so screw it. What's the point anymore? Goes to the top, so gives up the tier one bottom tower in the end. Dyer's bottom and that's even tower more far for Juggernaut, especially to work with here for the Radiant side. But Lycan continues to be the shining star, the shining hope even for Team Moriarty, who's already down 5 nothing, It's about a 2,000 net worth lead. So yeah, they're really gonna need, need him to kick in that here. Especially with the Helm of the Dominator almost finished. Start pushing towers himself, it seems like. Would be a good place to start. Deal with that top lane. What do you think? Should Lycan be looking for some kills once he gets the Helm of the Dominator, or should he just be pushing objectives? Um, he can, it kind of, it's kind of one of those things where kills fall into you. I think he can do both, you know, kind of work out. I do want to see him take advantage of the catapult timings at 10 minutes and get a building with that. But otherwise, he can kind of do both. I think it'll, just pressuring lanes and bringing other heroes will work in his favor naturally in terms of kills. Or at least that's kind of ideally what you would hope for. Yeah. See, Death Prophet's pinging out the middle lane. I mean, Queen of Pain is very low, so maybe saying we should, we need to rotate, get this kill. Obviously, they do not see Disruptor nearby. It is nighttime currently. Death Prophet standing his ground. Now here comes Disruptor, the Sonic Wave in the face. Yeah, Death Prophet. With the man up. Ended up not being the best play. So Moriarty finally gets on the board. I think a lot of people would have tried to scream out there, but he trusted just the alt damage, knowing he didn't Radiant's have the mana for the scream. And just barely got the kill on top of the disruptor. Like in top the lane. Oh, the centaur misses the stop. He knows he has a free TP. No, he does not, because Glimpse stops him. Picks up another tree. Throws out the avalanche, hoping for the best. Ain't gonna work. Tiny goes down. Good effort. Better response. I love Moriarty. But middle tower. It's now going to start dropping pretty quickly. Queen of Pain comes in, but obviously not much more she can do right there, especially with the exorcism up and that healing ward. 
which is going to be killed right there. And actually, so they get the tower kill, but at what cost? Now, Death Prophet, Exorcism is not going to be wearing off anytime soon. So he goes down the kill Queen of Pain just before, at least. So takes her with her. And now Illusionist, Burl Strike in one second. He's going to be fine, keeping his distance. But yeah, overall, it probably works out pretty well for the Radiant side. Yeah, but you're, this is all on exchange of this tower top. True. So it's one for one tower Radiant's trade, one for one hero trade. Fallen. Not especially notable, other than the fact that exorcism was used. Which means I could possibly see a smoke coming out as soon as they get six on Disruptor. Uh, I'll take that. As he actually has 1,400 gold on Disruptor. I mean, he's rich. <laughs> Did he, never... he get a bounty there or something? I mean, he killed the Death Prophet, so. A little yeah, but. No, yeah, he's sitting on 1,500 now. Yeah, you're right. It's... Seems unnecessary. Let's, let's He's halfway to Dagon, Breaky. More than halfway. I'm just saying. Get something. creative with it. Probably Dyer's definitely going to be the Archon Boots. Under attack. You never know. A little bit before our second nighttime coming out. So Night Stacker just farming what he can in the bottom lane, meanwhile. Yeah, Sand King had it pushed up. Tranquil Boots finished on him. The Blake Dagger status. 400 plus gold saved up. From the Tempest of Battle. So of course, still going to be away. Yeah, this is Strupper. He's literally walking around the secret shop, and he's not buying the <laughs> Arcane Boots, so I don't know. Uh, he's thinking. So this is something it's else. Now. Dyer's he's a play now. He's a play now. Finally. Dyer's structures is that a shapeshift? Sure is. He's got an Alpha Wolf with him. He's going to run after Death Prophet. He's just going to right-click him down. Spirit mm -hmm. Siphon, I don't think that's going to save him. Normally you don't see an Alpha Wolf Lycan thing already is ready Dyer's to kill somebody, but... Yeah. Is under attack. The ward near the mid lane showed the Death Prophet. Oh, bottom lane. Radiant Epicenter Radiant used for this. Trying to kill Bashrook. Oh, wow. Again, it is daytime still, so can't fly yeah. away or anything. And Brewmaster will cut him off the side. Though. He's definitely dead. Omni Slash. And he even stole Lycan all. Oh, wow. Celebrate. That's <laughs> not often you see that. Okay. He's running around pretty fast, attacking from range. That looks funny. Anyway, Static Storm on a Juggernaut catching him. And he too will fall, actually. So the response is real for the Dire Side. Lift up on a Tiny as he tosses up Sand King. But now Brewmaster going to bring him back down. Tiny trying to get the kill on a Sand King. Keep it on the outskirts. Now they have Sand King stun. Barrel Strike going back in. The Fidwell almost kills him. Ruben gets the kill on a Sand King as he goes back in. But Mikey doing what he can to survive and actually is going to live for now. Glimpse in five seconds. He's going to survive, oh, he's and the team to tree toss to get the kill. That was really well played by Rubik and Tiny. That was. Good teamwork. Very good teamwork indeed. Both sides trying to make some plays, and singularity worked out better for them. And again, that all started all with the Lycan. Yeah, all the meanwhile Night Stalker is just trying to farm his level 6 for darkness. Mm -hmm. He almost has it. Necro Necrobook coming out for Lycan. Pretty staple Lycan build at this point, you could say. It's by far the most proliferated Lycan build in the scene. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to really propel him in terms of net worth to the top. Because he's going to get a lot of buildings attack. and farm very fast with the Dominator, especially with the Alpha Wolf. Dyer's top tower has Tiny fallen. with that Blink Dagger. Looking for something now. Hunting in the trees. You have Juggernaut pushing out the top tier two tower. Worthy and there's twin. the Yules that I talked about from Queen of Pain. Dyer's it's actually a fantastic Yule swap attack. game. Um, you have Juggalt, DP Silence, Night Stalker Silence, Fade Ball. Ooh, Sanking's in the trees. Oh, yeah, they, they know he's there. The Something scouted it, and they're going to catch him. Sandstorm, Burl Strike. He's going to be fine for now. The Exorcism, though, you fly Dyer's on it with Night Stalker to get the vision. Secure that kill. So that is a Radiant's tier two tower kill as well. They're gonna Dyer's pressure tier three. Actually, this is still up for another ten seconds yeah, or so. Yeah, I think this is basically like uh, you'll TP back no matter what. Type of thing. Oh wow, Tiny's really going in. Tosses it. Got the static storm down. At least the disruptor doing a little bit of his job. He will die in the end. Howls pop from like and they're running after them. Though. What can they get as far as casualties? Night Stalker flying away is gonna eventually be caught up to. No. So the answer is a so far one. <laughs> Solon again with the shapeshift. It's so goofy. <laughs> it looks funny. The fact that he can attack range from it too is quirky. Oh, look at this. Uh, Tiny's remember me? <laughs> Cutting the creep wave. And then he's going to TP out. So bit of a distraction there from 
Singularity. This Lycan, though, he continues to be the top farm. The Necronomicon again, level one finished. And level two's on the way. I really like how Jug just went drums and is just fighting, but also going battle for now that he can feel safe to. That's he beating you here. Not overly concerned with farming and playing greedy. Just wanting to be able to actually be competitive um, and be some opposition against the Lycan. Uh, <laughs> well, Rue did not expect that. He gets ex exploded. Disruptor kinetic field will save him for now. Nice job stopping Mikey with the blink. Epicenter being channeled up. Mikey now, he's a little bit too deep. He's in trouble. The house pop. And on top of the Sonic Scream gets the kill from Queen of Pain right there. The Scream of Pain even. Juggernaut, he's going to have to spin on through, try to escape himself as Rubik went a little bit too far up. Did not have mana for his own Pearl Strike. So no exorcism. Bloody murder. That was a weird pop blink. Yeah. Very too aggressive. scared to go in, but wanted to go high ground. <laughs> see how they would react to it, but yeah, this is a game very back and forth here between these teams. They have Static Storm again. If they can get a Static Storm on Jug. Radiant oh, they just use that. Yeah, they're, they're pinging out Juggernaut. They know he's in the area. The Wolf's going to scout him. Oh, great oh, silence, though, silence. on three different heroes. They catch the Queen of Pain. In comes yeah, the uh, Kinetic Field, though, with the Static Storm. On top of the Sonic Wave, and Queen of Pain blinks away. She's going to survive, sitting on the outskirts. Adamson trying to run himself, but the Earth Hanna puts the stun with a rock and gets the kill. Death Prophet, she is throwing up, delayed here. And now she's going to be stunned with a rock. She, too, is killed. Double kill for Brewmaster. Great play on multiple different players there. For Moriarty as a whole, though. Five for two exchange. Five for one, actually. Brewmaster lives. Fight recaps buggy. Anyways, huge fight for Moriarty. They take out the middle tier one. Let's top it all off. Yeah, that, that initial getaway for Kuda Pain, but the static storm kinetic field combo coming out. You mentioned that was ready. Despite that silence. It was just in time. I'll take that as tribute. And now you have a level three Necronomicon. So 16 minutes. We have Helm of the Dominator, level three I'll Necronomicon finished. That seems pretty fast. Eh, it's a decent, it's a decent timing. I mean, it's it's a good timing. Question is, how are they going to use it? I mean, this exorcism and the Roche, and then we're presumably going to see a ton of grouping up from Radiant. It's going to be a little. It's going to be pretty execution oriented. Can they get the epicenter off? Can they get the disruptor static storm off? Brewmaster split, or are they going to get three man silence by DP silence by Night Soccer? And then here comes the question. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was uh, Juggernaut, I think, kind of baited them out initially with the illusion. And they, I don't know if they are just trying to kill the illusion or they actually thought that was a real one. Ran a little bit too deep. The question is, do you map control with the Sages or do you just try and push? I assume they're just going to push, but they have a lot of lane shoving to do before they're ready to group up with anything. And they have to wait for Exorcism to come up as well. Bottom, Night Stalker. Queen of Pain's trying to find him. Not gonna do so. He had Yules, but couldn't find him yet. It's a nice attempt. Get away. But yeah, it's, I mean, I guess to kind of go back to what you're saying there, it seems like with the Battle Fury just about finished now with Juggernaut, maybe, you know, use it for more of that kind of control of the map rather than really trying to push with it to allow Juggernaut to accelerate crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you get great execution off from Mortiari, then it's pretty doubtful you fail in a team fight anyways, just because Static Storm and Epicenter are just that powerful, especially since you're hitting the level 12 mark on Sand King. You're about to hit the level 12 mark on Brewmaster, and those ultimates are going to be significantly better than they were. Now oh, Sand King gets his blink. It almost feels like he's had the blink already, but no, nope, just gets his blink about 18 minutes. And he's going to smoke up with the team. Middle lane. Yeah, this is what they're looking for, a smoke play before the Exorcism comes back out. This is what I wanted from them. Not afraid of the Aegis when they have no Exorcism. It shows a lot of confidence. Radiant yeah, no catch scanning. to be had, Juggernaut. Over here. Queen of Pain's going to see him, but not much they can do with that information. As Night Stalker is the one that maybe has to be a little bit careful the top lane. As they are making their way up here now. So you see Night Stalker, Dyer's the axe is being worked on. Is under attack. Uh, he's already got the point booster. 
There's 700 gold saved up, so still a little bit of ways before that's that's to take place. But as always, the all important vision that it brings is is big. Tiny yeah, pretty centered TV item build. I mean, you could have seen something attack. more useful now. Let's like say, I don't know, Spirit Vessel, Solar Crest. Yeah. But just going to go straight Ags. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. See, I don't know. That, that's where it's... I think there is an argument to be made. Yeah, with, with how much fighting is going on especially, potentially that would be better, right? Where, yes, Ags eventually is a great item once you have Dyer's it, but... Middle tower is under that's attack. my belief, for sure. It's getting there. Yeah, he's committing towards it. Pops his darkness. As Juggernaut's just pushing out the tier two middle tower, I believe Sand King, yeah, he's in position. Sand King epicenter being channeled up, here we go. Looking for the jump, jump to the back lines, they catch the death prop, and they explode it right there. Avalanche trying to stop him up. Mikey's in trouble now as a Howl activated by Lycan. Nice stop initially with the uh, toss from Rubik, but it's not gonna be enough. Adamson now, he's running away, already uses Omni Slash. That's gonna be a Battle Fury use. I don't think he's getting out of this one. Brewmaster has a lift even uh, even necessary. They just easily sit on top of him and take out Juggernaut. Triple kill for Lycan. This Lycan, man, he's just, he's been unstoppable this game, it's felt like. Yeah, I'm generally not fond of the Lycan, of the Jug into Lycan. I just generally feel like, I mean, they did last pick Lycan, so I generally feel like Lycan's just pretty strong, both timings-wise and kind of man-to-man -man against Jug until significantly later in the game. Who paused like here? Sanking's having an issue. I think it was Sanking. <clears throat> uh, nothing like winning a fight and then pausing the game right after. <laughs> Tilting the other team even more. No, but I'm sure a valid issue. Get back into it here, ASAP. But yeah, this like in an, an AC is next to line and you know, usually you'll, you'll see maybe something like the BKB coming alive necessarily, but the way the freedom that he has this game, we start like going into it with the draft. He was going to have a lot of freedom, so yeah, BKB really is not necessary. It seems like for uh, for him to yeah. go for so. You see I agree. Definitely a vast majority of the damage is physical. I mean, there's really just tiny combo, which is probably going to be dedicated to a support or Queen of Pain, and fade both, and just minor stuff like Crypt um, Crypt Swarm very low stuff but exorcism juggle tiny right clicks those are the significant damage dealers too i mean the whole team particularly like in the so you're soloing down here how about ruby going the drums himself actually <laughs> interesting there yeah i mean tankiness and move speed i think are i wouldn't say the name of the game just because you have a lot of gap closing but burst strike blink glimpse but are fairly this useful commodities. Gold remains. I'm actually kind of surprised to see the drums on Rubik. Yeah. Especially when they already have one. Like, if it's like their only drums, you know, may okay, maybe, but to see it on a hard support like that does feel a little odd. I think it just feels nice, and I think you get to a point where it's just the Yules build up or whatever you're looking for is a little too difficult to build up towards and a straight blink rush you just feel so squishy and slow pulling that gold Sand King pushing out bottom lane does have uh does have like nearby if he was to get jumped but as we see that's not gonna happen it is nighttime now for a bit longer three minutes more Radiance so, as you mentioned, the sure Knight's Docker's enhanced, but so is Lycan. Goes back to one of the many reasons they picked up this hero in the final pick. I'm curious to see um, if Lycan switches out the Minotaur creep that he has right now with a skeleton net creep or a purge Radiance creep for the silences. Oh, he shapeshifts. Well, he's looking to fight, that's for sure. Knight's Docker thought he had a chance, and <laughs> little do you know. He did not. In fact, Purge Creep slows down Death Prophet, or that's the Necronomicon, I should say, as he pops the Shrine Mastermind, realizing that was his only effort to maybe survive. It's not nearly enough, though, as this Lycan, again, just shreds right through you. And he gets on top of you, with which, with, with Shapeshift, is pretty easy, as we've seen. So two more kills, and again, Singularity, they were the ones that, that were hunting. They were the ones that thought they found something, and, well, I guess they did find something. 
And now this bottom tower is dead, and Lycan's doing this even without the AC finish, which now is just about there. As he's already sitting on a plate mill with 3,300 gold saved up. They're going to go tier yeah, 3 themselves now. Like, he just needs like 500 more. Yeah, I think they're just going to push this till the... Um... Oh, wow. Uh-oh. You're dead. Okay, well, that was a nice cobble. Sonic Wave in the backline, so Chargernaut had to respect that. No shape shift obviously means Lycan doesn't necessarily want to fight right now. So it is trying to fall back, being body blocked by Solon though. Queen of Pain trying to distract him, Lycan. Still 20 more seconds before shape shift, so they do run him down. That's a huge kill. Ruby yeah, getting it. Yeah, that's a huge kill. I think they were a little overconfident. Necro book was dying. I thought they were just going to push with the creeps and back off with the hero, but he just ran straight in with the hero and died. Um, I also thought that was pretty odd that they did that with Sand King TPing top. Mm -hmm. I think he was hoping to cancel a TP or something, but he was late and they were all back. Yeah, not having shapeshift always it's as as much as I keep saying how like this this hero just feels unstoppable, but obviously like it goes without saying, he's a completely different hero when he doesn't have shapeshift up. Like <laughs> his threat yeah. is not nearly the same. And that that alone maybe was reason to be like, okay, maybe we shouldn't be pushing. I've returned to the grass. The hindsight back there, but without shapeshift, Lycan is like a melee creep with howl and items, and with sure. it, he's a mega fast wolf. Haste. <laughs> yes, that's that's a great description. That's the, Thank you, Henry. That's the expert analysis <laughs> I'm here for. Yeah, that what was would beautiful. You do without me? Hyperstone almost picked up, so again, I keep saying it, but the AC is now just about here for him. Queen of Pain has the Orca to go with the Yules. Now he's looking for a Lincoln's even. That should help. To follow it up. And is being found by Tiny, or more so... Oh, okay, I guess they're finding Night Stalker, who's over here too. Darkness yeah, Tiny was nearby with the invis. The issue the there is, Lycan used Howl to try and catch up the Queen of Pain, so now they're not going to have Howl if they try and force fight a base. Besides, Jug's pressuring mid really hard, so they're going to have to come back, but Disruptors in the Fog could easily set up with the Static Storm, which is super good. Radiant Interestingly Oscar. enough, Jug went blink. He blinks into the tower, and Static oh. Storm can't kill it. Yeah, and here comes a follow-up now. He's dead. I, You know, I, I caught that as you said that, so I didn't even necessarily see what he did initially, but... That seemed like it wasn't the, well, obviously in the end result wasn't the best decision, or whatever it was, but a little bit funky. Yeah. Essentially, he there. just blinked in and died, which is... Not a good strat. <laughs> Radiance middle tower Last I checked. Under attack. He's dead for 30 seconds, so that's an easy tier two. They, yeah, well, they go top. I was going to say, they could just Radiant's go top and get that one as well, or... No, they're going to... Oh, It'll take a little bit of amount of time. Roche is up. I think they could easily Roche really fast. Oh, yeah. That they I like how Bruce just going BKB, recognizing that all he has to do is get his ult off, and BKB basically, you know, negates all of the signs oh, that would ever serve any condition for him to do his ult off. So he's just going to play it safe. No AM disc, no Radiance, just straight going BKB. There's the cheese picked up by Lycan. They give Queen of Pain the uh, the Aegis. Understandable. Yeah, Lycan, Lycan's a generally pretty poor Aegis carrier, uh, contextually. Just because if he dies and then respawns, he has no ult. Um, and if he doesn't ult the first time, then he's fairly useless. And then dies. Well, they killed Brewmaster. <laughs> Watching that coming in, the smoke gank. And He's blowing him Radiant's up, even the Omni Slash he used. So, nice find there. They get the Tier 2 tower bottom, but they do lose Tier 2 top. And Lycan is ready to push. He does have Shape Shift, but no. Without Brewmaster, clearly not the most comfortable. And we know what happened last time as well, so. Gonna fall back. Ooh, Juggernaut. He's up here hunting for somebody. He's got the Invis rune active. If he can find Disruptor again, doesn't look like that's going to be the case, though. So instead of we'll walk back into his jungle. But, yeah, but I mean, Juggernaut's build, it looks kind of interesting right now because he's got, like, his big farming tool and Battle Fury mobility and Blink Dagger and drums. It's like, where's – I mean, I know he's dealing damage, sir, especially with this crit built in, but <laughs> it, it, it still feel, it's not the most overwhelming yet, right? So they need plenty more for him before he's a, a scary threat here. 
Yeah, I mean, you've just gotten way more value out of every dollar for Lycan's like, hero than you have for Jug's hero. I don't think he's done anything with the blink whatsoever. Uh, I mean, the drums was okay, he fought with it. But he desperately needs a Manta for the Orchid. I mean, you can't have a Jug at 30 minutes dying to a Queen of Pain Orchid. And just having that one item eliminate him from the game. He needs a Manta stat. It's going to take another 3,000 gold, which will take a bit. Middle lane. And Disruptor away. You got Lycan, of course. He's ready to go. Alpha Wolf is near his side. Radiant's Answer that damage. Again, he has Shape Shift with the cheeses mentioned. Gonna save the Shape Shift for now. Just pops Radiant's a howl. That tower's melting awful. away. The Primal Split already used here. My Brewmaster, there's a shape shift. Static Storm on top of the racks as well. A disrupt, or more so Death Prophet looking to go in and pops his exorcism. In the back lines, though, the epicenter does connect on a Rubik. Rubik dropping quickly. Rubik will fall. The Omni Slash bouncing around from Juggernaut. Eventually gets stopped, though, now spinning on top of Queen of Pain. She's lifted up, though, the silence as she comes back down, so the Aegis will be popped now. Can't she blink out in time? Gets saved from some teammates, maybe. No, she cannot. The Burl Strike in, but it's too late, and now Sand Kings is apparently fine because they don't have vision. Oh, nice four staff. <laughs> okay. It's a pause coming out from DP. Strat pause. I mean, the only reason that fight was close was because of how much they did focusing buildings while taking a lot of damage. Um, Lycan's also going to get the shrine bottom, so significant objectives coming out. I think had they fought 5v5 outside of base, it would have been, I wouldn't say clean wipe. Mm -hmm. For Mortiari, but it would have been really, really good for them. But since they were trying to kill the racks with all the Necronomicon helmet on them and Lycan while fighting, it worked. Oh. They, get, they got what they came for. Okay, they, they, they are going to get him in the end. I was going to say that Avalanche initially completely whiffed, so if Sand King actually got away, that would have been something. But they do have the chase. And they do secure the kill. Good job by Singularity finishing the job. But as you mentioned, yet Moriarty. Thinking that fight may be a little bit too deep. Yeah, Saber Light top lane. He's probably dead. Does not have a split. He did just finish his BKB at least. So has that going for him. He'll have that once he's back up, but gonna be a little bit of time before that's the case, of course. Lycan just goes back to farming, and Lycan is gonna insist on going to BKB. He's going back to it. I don't know. It, 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 again, that feels a little. It just almost feels unnecessary to me. Nope, he's going nullifier. Who? Oh, wow. He just yeah. bought a relic. Okay. I saw a relic was Dyer's like, yeah, that's a nullifier. It's excellent. Against DP with the Yules, Jog with the inevitable Manta. Dying with Dyer's middle full Shadow Blade, has which fallen. isn't yeah. all that significant. Yeah, but see, I like the nullifier a lot. Exactly, yeah. It's Again, it just, it, like the BKB, it's just never a bad item. It's just, you know, for, for that value, you feel like you could be getting a lot more such as an old fire. In fact, they catch Tiny here, but they, I mean, it's a disruptor, really. He caught him with the glimpse. Brings him right back in. And, uh, they have BKB now on Quap. They should just go. Okay. I don't know where they should go, but they should go. <laughs> they should go somewhere. Roshan's not up for a while. So I definitely can't do that. Sinking's going to walk into death top, though. This is really good for Singularity. Oh, Juggernaut. He's going to walk into death. He blinks forward. He's spinning on the... Okay, he's going to go with the TP. That damage, though, especially with the Sonic no, Wave. Sinking lift top. And yeah, Sinking lift. And he just bought now his Manta style. Go. So he doesn't have yeah. a buyback. He bought out. They're oh, going. No. That timing. That timing, though. Yeah, Juggernaut was by himself. He did not expect the whole team to be there. Or practically the whole team. Buyback from Tiny. No buyback from Juggernaut. Lycan doesn't have his ultimate. He's just going to die. We saw this before. Okay, well... That they happens. They really, really underrate the power of a solar <laughs> they system. And they're going to lose Brewmaster. Yeah, that's... Comes for you. You know, it's... Pretty bizarre. It, to, to happen once is one thing, but yeah, exactly. The second time, it's like that buyback happens, it's... You, you should fall back. Like, it, it, clearly that's... Lycan's a different hero without Shapeshift. I don't know how many times we can stress that. Seeing that there again, so so much for killing Juggernaut with no buyback. It's almost like it. It's almost like it helps Singularity in the sense that they get two kills themselves. Because they can almost kill bottom towers. Good remains. So, I don't know, silver lining, I guess. True. For sure. 
And Night Stalker, you can't overlook this. We mentioned this earlier with the whole discussion. Would he be better off going like Solar Crest and stuff? But he actually does have the axe. Had it for a little bit. He has a gem on top of that. And so vision of the map is definitely in control right now of Singularity. And that's uh, thanks to him. Now, the, the Wolves of Lycan ideally are also doing a bit, but Night Stalker is no doubt providing plenty of information <coughs> for the team here. Queen of Pain, by the way, almost level 20. And, of course, that's important for the spell uh, the spell life steal. That he'll get, or shield, or however you want to look at it. Double damage rune in the bottle currently. And they're just running middle lane. They're going to find Tiny, actually. Tiny pops Shadow Blade. They have a sentry. Flips back in. Static Storm. Everything. Kinetic Field does not connect, but the dust eventually comes out just in case to secure it. And they have no like an alt again. They're good at that. You know, get a big pick off and then not having like an ultimate I'm, ready for yeah, I'm seeing it over and over again. Oh no, don't tell me this is going to happen again. Oh boy. Okay. A third time. Now it's just getting ridiculous. I mean, they kill the tower. But come on. That's not worth it. It'd be one thing if it was the first tower and they could get shrines now. But they've already they, that was 15 minutes ago when they killed the first shrine. Yeah. No, I'm definitely That's with you now. <laughs> it's 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 getting a little ridiculous now. It's it's you, you got to learn your lesson because all they're doing is they're, they're they're completely killing any momentum that they they're constantly getting. I mean, maybe they'll get it again. They'll get another pick with no buyback. But usually you really want to you know capitalize off of that. Goes without saying, but they're not really. It's kind of kind of backfiring almost. So maybe they'll all come together eventually. And he still has that BKB queued up. I guess if, if that's going to be happening, maybe the BKB will be a potentially good item to have for him here. Brewmaster. Shiva's is in the works himself. Speaking of his own BKB. Yeah, see, I, so you're talking about the BKB earlier on Brewmaster. I've always felt it's kind of an odd item on a Brewmaster for simply the idea, of course, with the primal split. And it's like, yeah, so it's good to use either initially to make sure you get it off, I guess, or after the fact. But Sand King, by the way, he's dead top lane. Now they catch him. I don't know. The, it's, it goes to the fact that he hasn't used it yet almost is like to my point, I feel like, where I, I it's hard to even, use right. I'm not even 100% sure what he's been doing. I mean, other than the fights that he that happened at the, the um, Radiant Team base where he got his ult off. Outside of that, I haven't seen Brewmaster ult much. I mean, I guess that's the only major significant fights. I'm just saying it's like a safety measure, I guess. If that makes sense. It's yeah. more like you would much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah, no, but and that makes sense. I, I, that's fair. But just in terms of... Yeah, I don't know. Just a lot of gold uh, that you're doing for that. Compared to compared to the previous game, I really feel underwhelmed with the Brewmaster this game for sure. Well, then I guess maybe it's because the. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, I guess that that's why you can argue where the, the, why we see even the Aeon disc quite a bit on yeah, this hero because exactly. that, that kind of accomplishes the same thing and it's it's cheaper. Oh, I say yeah, thirty three fifty. Yeah, but yeah. they can change silences through the Aeon disc and stuff like that. It's true. He should never not be able to get his ult off with a PKB. Middle lane, smoke play from the Radiant. Radiant's Were they seen doing this, by the way? Attack. Was there a wolf? Because the way... I'm wondering if they spotted him smoking here. No, but the Night Sucker ult makes it really obvious. I think this is a smoke. I mean, maybe they'll try and catch someone, but I think more importantly, they want to clear Radiant's out wards and kill wards and place fallen. wards. Um... That's definitely the main goal. But the right. just gonna hemorrhage your kill real quick. Yeah. Uh, kinda. There you go. Done. Juggernaut will make it happen. You see the army of Lycan though. Look at this double catapult. I mean, <laughs> this is a big Haste. wave going down the middle lane. Even using the shock wave from the Seder to help push it in. And he's they're pinging out the bottom racks. Radiance bottom barracks here. are under attack. So they want a ninja somehow, but meanwhile, Roshan going on from the Radiant side. This 
is interesting. Queen of Pain's actually going to jump in and kill Rubik as well as the Range Rax. And she's going to bot it. Yeah. They have a decision oh, to make Sanking now. Oh, Sanking knows, though. They're going to go take bottom marks for sure. Sanking's just distracting him. He's so actually going to live for now. Yeah. Bit of a bait Bruce right well. there. And they're going to kill the bottom melee Rax. BKB for Brewmaster. He's jumping in. Maybe going to try to put the steal. We'll see if he can get it in time. Roshan's definitely down right here. Can he get the steal? No, he cannot. Mastermind picks it up. There's the primal split, though, from Brewmaster. Death Prophet. Jesus, still on the ground. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it sure That's, is. Look at top. Top Rax as well. Zan King picked up the cheese. They're going to kill the Top Rax. That's going to be Mega Creeps. Just like that. So Roshan, definitely not worth it if you're the Radiant side. That was well played for Moriarty. I mean, they're going to lose Brewmaster, but obviously the big picture, they completely come out on top. Yeah, it's outmaneuvered for sure. Yeah. And Moriarty. Yeah, playing well. That's, uh, it's, again, they're coming off that uh, off of a high of defeating, uh, defeating OG, obviously, in the previous round and figured he'd, that they would carry that momentum here, and they, they definitely are. I mean, it's been a close uh, close game one, but now it is obviously we're at a point now where it's Moriarty's found a uh, quite the opening. Definitely, so they have Megas in their favor. Lycan pop shape shift, looking to run in. Juggernaut, oh Juggernaut gets caught initially. No fires put up. The glimpse a little bit awkward, but the hell the Sonic Wave and it's enough damage. He gets bursted down. Buyback from Juggernaut as the epicenter happens though in favor of the Dire Side. Knights of the Stalker gonna be ran down as well. Tiny's dead and he's staying dead. And his pop on Death Prophet that's gonna be wearing off shortly. The Exorcism of course is up, but if he dies here, sure he'll come back up, but no Exorcism. And it feels like Moriarty's just now really finishing the job against Singularity at this point. They're going to catch a Death Prophet again. Omni Slash, it's all on the Disruptor, though, but it doesn't even kill him in the end. He pops a Lotus Orb as well. And Juggernaut having to spin the other direction. He's losing all his teammates. GG well played as called. And it will be official. Moriarty takes game one here. This best of three. All right, these, this, this, the open qualifier team that was. That is even. Again, there was two open qualifiers. They were the second open qualifier team to qualify. And here they are on the verge of going right to the semifinals of the playoffs by taking a uh, first place seed in Group A if they manage to close out the series here. But they're up one nothing at least in this one. Who would have thought? Final thoughts on Moriarty's efforts there, Henry? Um, Really well played, I think. Decent cohesion, good map movements. Um, was a little, couple skeptical, questionable moments like the Lycan, the three deaths that he had in the exact same spot with no alt. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I think Entaki played really well again. Illusionist played well. I think they all played well. Um, a little underwhelmed with the Brewma uh, Brewmaster. I, I think maybe it was kind of a forced pick or off game. Either way, he played and they won. So, well played. We got game number two. Obviously going to be coming up here. A short break, but I'm Breaking CBK, joined by Henry. This is the MDL European coverage. Winner finals of Group A action. Winner goes to the automatic semifinals of the playoffs. The loser will have to fight their way through the loser bracket in this Group A action. Stay tuned, guys. Game number two coming up next. Mm -hmm. 